right. All right, there we go. Recording is going. We are officially off and running. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, hopefully this will be uh, a helpful and informative session. Uh, a couple bits of uh, reminders as we get started. First of all, of course, uh, this meeting, uh, this session is being recorded. Um, so uh, just so you know, you know, all of our uh, images, sounds, all that good stuff uh, is being captured uh, for posting uh, online. We'll also be transcribing this. And of course, releasing any questions that come up today as part of our frequently asked questions. Um, so do look out for that. But just a reminder, one more time, we are recording the session today, just like we recorded the last one. Uh, but beyond that, welcome. This is the House Bill 1100 Child Care Provider and Child Care uh, Employee Staff uh, Retention Bonus Program Customer Service Session to talk about reporting and some of the next steps here with regard to uh, administering this program. So uh, with that, uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you all uh, for joining on this holiday morning for those of you who are here. Uh, and I do wanna wish you all a, a happy Memorial Day and, and continue to express my gratitude for all those who have served uh, here as we are on Memorial Day. We'll, we'll plan to get everybody out right on time too. So hopefully you can go back to uh, whatever it is you are doing today. But again, we are, we're happy to provide the session, you know, recognizing that you don't necessarily have children in attendance today. So hopefully this makes it a little more possible for some of you to attend uh, when otherwise perhaps you might not be able to. So again, welcome. We're glad you're here. The information today, again, is specific to the Child Care Provider and Employee Retention Bonus Program. We'll specifically be talking about kind of the, the closing out of this bonus round, uh, expectations for what you need to be able to submit to us, uh, what happens with any funds uh, that you have not awarded, or if you have extra funds available because somebody left the program, et cetera, we'll be covering all that today. Following the session, so later today uh, and into this week, we will begin to start uh, sharing this information that we go over today uh, in written guidance uh, via email. This will go out to all of the email addresses listed uh, in um, the applications that came in for the program. Um, so do look out for that. Uh, again, I say start coming out today because of email quotas. Uh, I do have limits on how many emails I can send uh, in a given day. And so because of that, um, have to space those out. And so we'll, we'll, typically we'll email uh, several hundred uh, per day. So it'll take a couple of days for everybody to get that email. So if you haven't received an email from us today with the written guidance that goes along with this session, not to worry, you should have that before the end of this week. Um, but just don't, you know, be aware that you might not get all of this today. And that's perfectly okay, perfectly normal. Just has to do with my email quota and how many emails I can send, because I do send those directly from my personal uh, email box. So that's why that takes a little bit of time. But all together here, uh, what we'll be talking about is primarily the process, uh, again, for submitting any of the documentation reporting associated with the program. And hopefully as we go over this, it also explains uh, and gives you an opportunity to ask any questions you have about any uh, any documentation you need to keep, anything that you might still have lingering uh, with regard to questions about the program as well. You're welcome to ask today, too. Note, please. Uh, that as we discuss the program uh, today, um, I do want to let everybody know uh, that in general, uh, we will be uh, reopening the application window, uh, not the application window, we'll be reopening the application uh, for this program um, later this calendar year uh, due to uh, a little bit of available funding remaining. Uh, it'll be the same as last time, same application, same everything. Uh, it is still a first come first serve program and we'll be notifying everybody with plenty of time uh, in advance before we reopen that uh, application. So, you know, haven't missed anything, you're not missing anything yet, uh, and we'll be sure to communicate that well in advance, but that is something that's coming down the road here. Uh, so if today one of your questions uh, is, or might be, you know, what do we do for staff who've either joined us after the fact, who joined us this year, but joined us, you know, after you submitted the application in November, or if you made an error uh, in your November application submission, you would be able to resubmit that. Now, employees who have already received the bonus uh, are not eligible to receive it a second time, right? This is only for those who might not have received it or might have missed it uh, in this last window, but 
that will be coming out. So uh, just a heads up for that kind of down the road. But again, for today, uh, we'll be talking about reporting. And the first piece of information I, I want to share is that, you know, the original uh, information for the program had an initial reporting deadline of June 1st uh, for some of the initial reporting for this. We have, however, managed to simplify your reporting and condense that from uh, two different reports into one. And so what we are actually doing, and, and we'll release this uh, in that written follow-up to this meeting today, is inform everybody again that that initial data collection, that initial reporting window, we are going ahead and removing. Uh, the reporting will be one single reporting deadline uh, through a single simplified form, uh, and that will be due July 31st. So what we'll be looking at today, uh, the form that we'll be looking at, the deadline for this is actually July 31st. It's only one reporting window instead of two. We managed to condense everything into one. And as you can, as you'll be able to see here in just a couple of minutes when I start sharing my screen, uh, we've managed to simplify that process and try and make that uh, as hopefully uh, painless and easy as possible, recognizing all the things that you all are always doing, uh, the more that we can do to make things uh, more simple uh, and less time consuming, we're certainly always trying to do that. And so hopefully today um, makes some of the process, some of the reporting uh, easier for the for the program. So uh, taking uh, in general, though, uh, before before I share the screen here, uh, what we're going to need from everybody uh, to close out this program is uh, a single submission of a closeout report and you're going to do that through an online form uh it's a link uh, that you'll get we'll release that uh like i said uh this week with that written guidance uh but in that form uh you're going to submit this uh once and only once uh so uh you should not submit this until you're ready with all of your uh relative uh employee information or your information if you know you're a small family center it's you uh you don't have employees right you know you still have to submit this um but of course, you know, you don't necessarily have to gather information from employees. But all of that being said, one form, uh, one submission uh, should be what you should be looking to do. Uh, and I'm going to walk through the form right now. I'm going to go ahead and share this because I think walking through the form will also give us some of the answers that uh, we may have with regard to uh, awards, uh, who's awarded, what do we do with some of the extra funds, et cetera. I'll actually go through that as we go through the form. Uh, and then just to know, in case anybody is wondering, at the end of the session here today, I will be opening up the chat uh, for any live Q&A, so certainly happy to answer any questions today as we're all here, uh, and then uh, we'll end from there. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so everybody should now be seeing my uh, screen. This is the uh, form that you'll actually be going to to submit your HP 1100 reporting. Um, the goal for this overall, right, is for us to get documentation from you all that indicates clearly that you have paid uh, the awards and the right award amount or amounts uh, for those who have split payments uh, to the specific eligible employees who were awarded the bonus, right? These funds are not eligible to go to a different employee. And so if you had an employee who received the funds uh, leave, but then you had a new employee come along and you were hired them after, you cannot provide those funds to that other employee if they were not included on that application and if they were not awarded the funds. OK, so uh, all these funds can only go to those to whom they were awarded in your original application. And so for that purpose, <clears throat> we are collecting documentation and you're going to need to report to us uh, a copy of either a pay stub or a check copy uh, of all of those bonuses uh, to show us that you paid out the correct amount and to the individuals uh, for whom those bonuses were intended. Uh, any For any employee to whom you do not provide that documentation back to us, uh, we will send an invoice <clears throat> and collect those funds back uh, this summer. So uh, for any employee who uh, we don't have proof of payment, we at the conclusion of this, so at the deadline on July 31st, uh, we'll be sending out an invoice. So uh, what this form will do overall is this is the form that gets us to uh, our final closeout. So once this form is due, like I said, on July 31st of this summer, July 31st, 2023, uh, once this form is fully submitted, once we've gone through uh, and checked all of the data that are in here, uh, which will probably happen sometime in mid to late August, since we have a July 31st deadline for this. Uh, at that point, like I said, MSD will go back through 
and we'll send out invoices and we'll invoice you for any provider to whom uh, you did not issue payment or to whom you did not uh, otherwise uh, give us evidence of submitting payment or uh, I should say and or uh, we'll also as part of that process be going through our records and checking on staff in the Maryland Child Care Credential Program and making sure that any staff uh, were at some point licensed uh, or sorry not licensed at some point had a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program uh, on or between June 30th of last year and June 30th uh, of this year. Uh, obviously that's a program requirement. We maintain those databases though <clears throat> So there's no need for you to submit us any uh, anything. There's no need for your employees to send anything regarding the Maryland Child Care Credential Program uh, as part of this closeout process. We can actually gather that information ourselves and we'll do that. So we're not going to make you send that twice, uh, but we will be validating that. Right. And so for any employee who did not ultimately meet that requirement, we will also be sending an invoice for those funds as well. Right. So they had to receive their Maryland Child a credential. Doesn't matter what level it was. But they had to have a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program on or by June 30th of 2023 here. Uh, and so for any employee who didn't, we will be sending out invoices. Uh, we'll be including that in our invoices that we send at the end of the program. But when you get to this form here uh, and you're filling out the form, most of it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, first thing you're going to do when you get to the form is provide the provider email address. So this is the email address that we should use to, to contact you or about any questions. It should match, hopefully, uh, the email that was submitted with the application, but it might not. Um, it's been a little bit, so uh, staff turnover, et cetera, that's fine. Uh, just make sure that this is an accurate email address, and do please make sure to check it. Uh, you know, if you put a typo in here or something like that, we don't have a way to to correct that, right? And so if, if you have an error in your email address form, you're not necessarily going to receive the email correspondence that comes back with this. So do make sure you're taking your time and filling out those uh, emails uh, correctly. Next thing you're going to do is provide your, the provider EIN number. So this is the center's EIN, should have no dash or hyphen. So, you know, you're not entering if, if the EIN is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? You're not going to put the hyphen in there like that. You're just going to put you're going to put the EIN all the way through. So this is the tax ID that's on the W-9 that uh, the state has associated with your center, right? This is a center's tax ID number. Next thing you're going to do is provide the license number. Again, not your provider ID. This is your current active license number from your uh, license, from your registration. Um, if you are a large provider, you have multiple sites uh, and um, multiple sites are all under that same EIN number. As you know, as part of the award process, we associated that award with one license number. And so you're gonna to wanna to provide in those cases, uh, just the one license number to whom the award or with whom the award was associated for all of your different centers. Uh, provider name, uh, again, this isn't necessarily your name. Uh, it could be, <clears throat> but it's not necessarily your name as you fill out. This is the name of the center. And so if it's um, Justin's Family Center, Right, I wouldn't put Justin Dayhoff as the provider name. I would put Justin's Family Center. So if you're looking to figure out what exactly you should be putting in this field, you're going to want to put um, the name that matches the name on your license number, so uh, on your license. And so if you're looking for, for what to go to for that, you can use that. Next thing you're going to do here is list any awarded staff. And so these are going to be the first and last names of any staff for whom you're attaching supporting documentation to show that you have paid the correct amount. Uh, again, this is how we will validate that you have paid out all of those who were awarded um, in uh, your center's funds. So for this case, for example, I would do Justin Dayhoff. Um, Jane Doe, you know, et cetera. And you can list it one by one. You can list it line by line. It's really up to you, but we do need to have everybody's first and last name to whom you awarded uh, at your center. After that, we have your non-awarded staff. And so one thing I want to note here is this isn't necessarily when we say non-awarded staff, not looking for you to put names of individuals to whom or for whom you applied but who might not have been awarded because they didn't meet eligibility or because there was an error in the application what for whatever reason that's not what non-awarded staff is asking non-awarded staff here is specifically asking for the staff for whom you pr we provided bonus awards 
but you might not have actually given the actual award out. You know, this could be somebody who left the center prior to the receipt of funds, somebody who didn't meet uh, or didn't ultimately get the credential, and so you didn't uh, provide the funds for that. All of those would go here in that section. And in this case, unlike the first one, there's a little bit more information we want you to provide, right? So in addition to your name, we would just want the reason, right? Left the center prior to receipt of funds, okay? Uh, so we do need to see that information here as well. So in total, if you want to think about it this way, between this field and this field, you should be responding and including everybody who is on your awarded list. Uh, and so they might all be in awarded staff. Ideally, they are, and that's great. In which case, you just put a good old NA here, not applicable. Uh, otherwise, if you do have staff here who you did not end up paying uh, the bonus for, again, they left uh, before you did it. Again, this is a child care retention bonus, right? And so if staff left it before you received the funds, um, you are not necessarily obligated to pay those out. A file upload. So this is where you're going to drop your files. So you can browse on your computer. You can actually just drag and drop files here, whatever it is. But this is where you're going to put the uh, pay stubs or copies of the checks. Again, if you are a family provider, uh, family home center provider, it's just you uh, and you're paying yourself. You know, we do need to see that you wrote a check to yourself and have indicated that that's for the bonus and reflects the correct amount for the bonus. Uh, we need to see that documentation. So uh, even in those cases here, we're still expecting to see something here that evidences that you did pay out these funds, in this case to yourself, in part because as a reminder, all of these funds are subject to regular tax and withholding. Now, we cannot provide tax advice Advice. So uh, beyond that, uh, our advice is and will always be to make sure you consult with your local tax professional. Um, but all of that to say, we do expect to see that information here. Uh, this does not need to include, okay, this does not need to include reporting for funds that were awarded as part of the hiring bonus, right, and, or hiring incentive bonus. And what I mean here is, remember, there are a couple of different pockets of funds associated with this. You had funds for employees uh, for their awards uh, for employees who were hired on or before July 1, 2022. And then for employees who were hired in your application, for employees who were hired this year in 2022, 2023, uh, those employees, as long as they worked at least 30 hours per week and agreed to work at the center for at least six months, generated an additional $500 per employee, not to provide an award for a bonus for the employee, but that additional $500 was for the center to cover initial payroll costs, some initial tax or onboarding costs, recruitment, zip recruiting, whatever. Uh, so we are not asking you to submit any uh, receipts or any evidence here associated with that spending. However, that spending is and remains subject to audit. And so we do ask that you maintain and retain all of the spending receipts and documentation associated with those funds uh, pending potential future audit. Uh, so again, we're not asking you to report it here, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't retain all of that documentation just as you would. So please do make sure you have retained that because those funds are fully subject to audit. The last piece of the form here, uh, these are just the, you know, uh, certifications at the end uh, that you, of course, uh, that to the best of your knowledge, information that what you're submitting here is correct and true and complete, uh, and that you are an authorized representative to submit this form. Uh, and then for there, the last piece, you just enter your name and title. So Justin Dayhoff, provider, owner, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and with this, of course, as per always, you can select to send a copy of this to your email for your own records. I always encourage that. Uh, and if you do, just click that bottom checkbox and re-enter your email for confirmation one more time here. Uh, and it will send everything that you've put here, including the attachments, right back to your email so that you have a record of that. Again, I highly and always encourage doing so. Uh, that way you have an extra copy of your records as well. So again, from there, uh, that's it. You hit submit, and one again, one reminder, only submit this form once, right? You want to include all information and attachments with this form. So if you've got multiple employees, you still want to submit this form one time, one time only. Um, if you, uh, again, we'll be submitting this by July 31st. After that, we'll be going through this form, reconciling that with the final uh, information that we have in our Maryland Child Care Credential uh, database about um, staff who have met the requirement. 
And then we'll, if if necessary uh, for you, um, you know, of course, we'll issue any invoices for additional funds back uh, that were unspent in uh, probably sometime in the mid uh, to end of August. Uh, for that, again, you know, retain those funds. Uh, you shouldn't be sending those back. Do you want to cash funds that have come into you? You don't want to necessarily hold on to the check because we're going to invoice them. It's it's you can't just you know not deposit the check, etc. Uh, you know, do wait for us to send an invoice uh, and to return those funds. Now, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pause my microphone here, and I'm going to open this up for uh, questions that you might have. Uh, any questions that you do have, uh, I'm going to turn on the chat. So we're not going to be turning on microphones or doing anything like that for this. Uh, we'll be dropping any questions that you have right on into the chat. And so give me one second, I'll turn that on for everybody and you can drop your questions into the chat. All right, so chat is now enabled. And so again, that's where you'll drop your questions today. Uh, again, we are not unmuting or turning on microphones. So um, I, raising your hand isn't gonna get you very far. So I do encourage you to use the chat to enter in any, um, any questions that you have. I'm also going to stop sharing here and come back on screen. If you're just planning to submit credential applications, can you clarify? OK, how I'm uh, going to start entering these as we go. I'm just going to go right through. I cannot see the screen that you're sharing. Uh, I would advise you to come back and check the recording then. Um, sorry that you weren't able to see that. That was up on screen, though. Uh, I'm planning to submit two staff credentials applications. Will I make the deadline? It's about a 30 day processing time, 30 to 60 days. So they may not make that right. That's one of the reasons we told everybody to get on this early and often. Uh, you know, it is now the end of the program, uh, so they may not make that deadline. Um, you should certainly submit it, but again, just a reminder, they may not make that. Uh, can you clarify how to complete the form for multiple licenses, but one EIN? Uh, yes, just like I said earlier, uh, you provide your EIN number and then you provide the license number of the center to which the awards were associated. Uh, are you eligible to receive the funds if you went down to a substitute? Uh, as long as the uh, that would be up to the center's discretion. If you had changed position uh, prior to the center receiving funds, that would be the center's discretion. Will the family daycare enter their name in the awarded section of the application? No, they would enter the name of the person who was awarded. So if it's a family center, it would be the person. Uh, so if it was Justin Dayhoff and, and it's I'm the family center, it's just me, I'd be putting my name there. Can we get a copy of or view the original on, uh, online application? Uh, you can send in a request uh, for that. Uh, and you can do that again to grants.msde at maryland.gov. Again, those emails should go to grants.msde at maryland.gov. And I'll put that in the chat here as well, just so that everybody has that email address. Okay. Um, I never received the award. Uh, then if go ahead and email the uh, email uh, again, grants.msd at maryland.gov. You're welcome to CC me as well. Um, and so do, you know, do send those our way. Um, we have one employee that left the, we were waiting on the conference certificate that arrived on May, you know, again, I hear you on waiting for the conference, but unfortunately that doesn't change the deadline because the deadline is in law and that is June 30th of 2023. We have one employee that left the program before the money was received. What do we do with her $1,000 bonus? So as I said, uh, nothing. You hold on to that. Uh, you're going to put the employee in the non-awarded staff. You're going to note that they left the center prior to the receipt of funds. We will invoice you for those funds back. Uh, we submitted a credential application in February, but hot her back. Will we have to refund MSDE? No, uh, doubtful, unless for some reason those credentials aren't approved. Uh, you should be fine. For family home, what's the deadline for the money needing to be dispersed? Uh, well, you're going to need to obviously have dispersed this by the time that you submit the form on July 31st. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the information necessary to meet the reporting. So uh, by July 31st. Uh, 
so again, if you have things that have been submitted timely, you know, prior to 60 days before the close of the application, um, you will likely honor that even if the credential uh, office hasn't responded. Uh, so I wouldn't be concerned. If it is, though, within the 60 days of the end of the grant period, it's going to depend on processing time. For anyone that has been hired after July 1st, 2022, do they receive the $500 bonus or is it absorbed by the center? Uh, it depends. Again, they have to meet an hours requirement as well, and it's a different hours requirement from the rest of the bonus eligibility. That high, extra hiring incentive requires a 30 hour per week uh, working. So just a heads up there, uh, it would just depend. For em employee additional adult, do they need to be credentialed? Currently, credentials only for FCC owner that is licensed. So I'm not really sure. For a family child care center, uh, yes, the, the adult uh, needs to have a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program. So uh, any staff who are awarded for this have to have a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program, according to the law. I have a credentialed staff member that was initially included in the bonus. She left me in January to go to the public school system, returning in June. Do I need to return the money? Can I give it to her because she's returning to us for work this summer? Uh, that's really going to be uh, at your discretion at that point um, to issue that. Good morning, Justin. My bonus was deposited along with my scholarship money combined to my bank account. I didn't write a check to myself uh, as my daycare account. Do I still need to write a check to myself as proof? Absolutely. So you still need to pay yourself this award, right? These aren't uh, funds that you necessarily can put keep back in your center. If you want to give it back into your center or use it in that, you're going to have to kind of go and do the full circle. But that way, the, in part because these funds are subject to full tax and uh, withholding, so you will want to make sure that you have paid yourself out using the funds and can demonstrate that accordingly. Uh, each award was associated with a different license number. Should I put all the license numbers? No, you should not. So if the awards were associated with different license numbers, you're going to submit this uh, one form per, per license number. Um, I received a notice stating I'm eligible for the award. Again, if that's the case, make sure you email uh, the staff. You know, this, uh, these were subject to liability offset. So uh, in many cases, some of these were uh, held at the Comptroller's office, we can always look into that for you. Uh, again, just email grants.mste at maryland.gov. Um, these awards went out in about February or March. If you receive the money, but the staff left before you gave it out, do you still send them the money? Uh, no, you do not. It is a retention bonus. Uh, and so that's something that you would list on the non-awarded staff, and we'll collect that right on back. For next time, it would be helpful to reduce the required hours for staff. Unfortunately, that is not an option because the hours Components of these are defined in law. That's not an MSDE decision. Uh, I'm in director of workforce, so I'd rather have it in my check. Uh, I'm not really sure what you're saying. So for anyone hired after July 1, 2022, uh, again, um, you have the $500 and the $500 that go to the employee. For the additional $500 um, that come to the center for hiring, you know, it's up to the center to either award that out to uh, employees or to cover eligible costs, which include initial salaries of employees who've been hired uh, or um, recruitment, zip recruiting, right? It is not eligible to pay yourself or to give yourself an additional personal award. So those funds are to be used uh, for uh, hiring purposes. Employee that is the own on the application left. Uh, however, another employee was hired in its place. How will that work? Uh, it will. It does not work. Uh, only those who are on the original application are eligible. So if you've swapped out, you've got to return the funds. Uh, you know, only those who are specifically listed on the original applications are eligible. The recording for today and the recording for the previous one will be listed on the grant program website. So uh, on Maryland's grants page. If you go to the child care provider and employee retention bonus, this will all be included on that page. Uh, I've submitted an application but did not submit an application for credential yet. Do I have to submit another application again? Uh, well, I mean, if you haven't submitted the application for credential yet, you're probably out of time, which means you're, you're probably out of eligibility for that. Uh, I'm sorry I did not catch what do we do if we receive the grant as a deposit. I did not write a check to myself. How can I go about it now? Well, you can write a check to yourself now. Uh, you know, uh, again, the timely, the, there's no deadline in terms of the timing of that check, so uh, you can write one next week. Perfectly fine. We just need to see that you have paid that out, right? We don't, we certainly don't expect uh, that all checks would have been issued by now. Uh, you know, many of you, uh, many of your colleagues are waiting until June 30th to, to check and confirm on credentials before issuing payment, because it's often, of course, harder to get payment back after you've issued it, and, and that's that's real hard. 
so we get that totally fine. And same with this case here, you, you essentially have until July, until you submit the form to send this in. Uh, so um, just know about that. Uh, so Danielle, for the additional $500, I, I recommend reading the guidance. It's, it's spelled out there. It's also spelled out in our, our communication here. But again, for new hires, they were eligible for $1,000 split into two parts, a $500 and a $500, depending on when they got their credential. But in addition to that, they generated an additional $500 if they work for the center for uh, at least 30 hours uh, a week. And so that same employee could technically generate $1,500 in award, $1,000 for them and $500 for the center. The $500 for the center is not an extra bonus money to go to staff or to go to owners. That is specifically to go to and toward uh, like I said, zip recruiter, recruitment costs, uh, pension, you know, some of the initial payroll onboarding costs, whatever that might be. Uh, we have our employees to 967 after taking, will this be an issue reporting since it's not the total? Uh, no, it will not, um, you know, because we, we can reconcile uh, the, the, the taxes on there. We just need to see that those were paid and what those checks were. That is all we need for that. That's all. Whew. Okay, I'm at the end of the question list, uh, but I'm still here. So uh, what if I only have one bank account? Uh, still going to need to write yourself the check, right? I mean, again, for, for best practice, uh, you know, of course, we always encourage that you don't keep business and personal accounts together. Uh, obviously, operate how you're going to operate, but we do need to see that check. So even if it's going back into the same account and you're depositing it back into your account, we still need that record of you issuing payment to yourself. Um, Yes, that's exactly right. You email grants.msd at maryland.gov. Yep. 100%. That is exactly right. Uh, you would just write the a check to yourself. Uh, so how do you write the check? I mean, you would write the check the same way, you know, you, you no need to treat the check any differently than you would have to, to do another check. And no, all that's submitting being submitted is what we shared uh, on screen here. So it's in the form. Uh, you're just going to submit what is required here. You don't have to send another application or, or resend your application to anything like that. Just the, the documentation that we're requesting here as part of the report. That's it. When will this form be open for submission? So this form will be open for submission starting this week. Uh, so once this email goes out, uh, starts going out, like I said, later today, it'll go on through the week. I can only email, you know, like I said, a few hundred providers per day because of my email quota. Um, and so, uh, you know, that'll come out, um, like I said, that, that, that'll that come out this week. And once that email comes out, the form is live. Um, so you'll have access to this from now all the way through July 31st. Uh, we'll be, um, you know, uh, holding that um, open all the way through the the window, the submission window. So you'll be able to access it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the way through July 31st uh, at the end of this. Um, is there another grant award round for providers who did not receive the bonus? So there will be another grant with the, the with the funds that we have left available. Um, uh, again, uh, we'll announce that when we're ready to do so. Um, we will uh, provide plenty of notice to everybody before that gets open because that, like this, will also be first come first serve. Uh, one thing to note is the credential requirement doesn't go away. Neither does the date. And so this still will only be open to those who had a credential on or by June 30th of 2023. Uh, and it will have to be based on those who worked at your center in 2023. Uh, so just know that those pieces will not change, but it does give you an opportunity to include people who were hired, for example, after you submitted your application. Uh, you know, since those was back in November, there's a lot that could happen between now and then, or for anybody who you either forgot, uh, you know, made a mistake on the application or for some reason forgot to, to include them in the original application, those would all be eligible on that. But look for that uh, coming up here. Uh, where can we get a detailed printout, a detailed explanation of the grant payment? So that's on all the award emails that we sent out. It's also online. Uh, and so in the information, the program information guidance about the different um, requirements for the different programs, that hasn't moved. It's still the original link. It's still online. You can get all that right on the website. 
Uh, I'm a home daycare provider. How many times do I put my name in the boxes and the forms in which box? I did not have employees. Well, if you're a home daycare provider, it depends. Um, you know, it depends what the provider name is, right? Uh, because you might be a home daycare provider and it might be Justin's daycare or it just might be Justin Dayhoff. As the, so this is going to be whatever the name is on your active license. Uh, sorry, I'll share my screen there so you can see what I'm talking about. One second. Okay. So on the provider name field here, you're going to have that information there. And then in the awarded staff, you'd list yourself here. Uh, does the credential have to be approved and applied for by June 30th, 2023? Yes. By law, June 30th, 2023 is the deadline in the law. We cannot change the law. So that is the deadline. If we've already received the bonuses, will there be a second round for us for new or existing employees? Yes, so that, that when we reopen the application window, that would be eligible for those of you who've already participated. So you could be participating in this round and apply again here when we re-release it. However, you can't reapply for the same staff. And so it would be only for those who you either had existing employees who were not included, or again, you had a typo or something like that on your original application. It's an opportunity to resubmit them, et cetera. Uh, will you accept applied for even if not processed or approved? Uh, likely not unless it was uh, outside of the 60 days beforehand because it can typically take 30 to 60 days on it. Uh, and so if somebody's just submitting it today, I mean, it's the end of the program. Uh, we've been you know, talking since this was released to make sure they do that. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to do that. But if for some reason somebody had submitted earlier on uh, and that was and they still hadn't received notice, we would likely honor that. Uh, when we issue checks to our staff, our payroll inadvertently took out deductions and we issued a second check. Do you need copies of both pay stubs? Uh, yeah, I mean, we need, uh, it, it's really up to you on that one. Uh, ultimately, what we're checking for for that one is just to make sure that you've distributed it to the staff. I mean, I think if you just submit the second version or the second run, then you'd probably be fine. Uh, we can certainly reach out to you if we go through that and, and we see that that's not uh, enough in terms of supporting documentation, but I imagine that would be fine based on what you're writing here in, in the chat. So uh, in that case, you're probably only gonna need the, the second iteration of, of those checks, and that should be sufficient for documentation purposes for the report. Um, all right. Keep them coming, everybody. We're still here. All right, I'll blabber for a couple seconds here, give everybody a chance to think of any other questions uh, before before we end. Uh, but again, you know, as always, our thanks uh, for all you do. Uh, I mean that whole wholeheartedly, um, especially as a dad of a two and a half year old and, and, a, and a six year old, always grateful for all of you. Um, if you have questions, I'm going to put these in chat one more time here so it's fresh at the bottom of chat. Uh, email grants.msd at maryland.gov and you are welcome to CC me and putting my email address in here as well, justin.dayhoff and maryland.gov. Uh, do make sure it's going to grants.msde though. Uh, that way we maintain a record of, of anything that's coming in. We always use that to try and improve our customer service and response time, etc. So, but again, helpful to CC me as well, especially because I can jump in and I'll often help with uh, issuing those, especially with this program here. So. Um, if you have any questions though again and, and look out for a couple things here you're going to get information that we talked about today in writing as well as the link to this you're going to get out in an email from me direct sometime this week just depending on the timing of how those are phased out but you'll definitely have that this week in that email you'll also have the link to this form Yes, the thousand dollars does get taxed, subject to regular tax and withholding. Um, you'll have the link to this form. Uh, in addition to that, you'll have the information I talked about with the July 31st timing and just a general write up of what this expectation is. Uh, I will also put in there so people have it and can see that the information about the upcoming release of the um, uh, uh, reopening of applications uh, there. So do look for that. Uh, and then in addition to uh, in addition to that, uh, as always, reach out if you have any question. Will there be any other grants coming for Child Care Center in the future? Uh, not at this time. The only thing to look out for here as we close out the fiscal year is we're going to be, for those of you who participated in the last round, the third round of the 
child care stabilization grants in the fall, we will be going ahead and issuing those balance payments this spring, just like we did with the last round here. So we'll probably be doing those in the next couple of weeks. So if you were an awardee for that program, you can expect balance payments to come out, but there will not be, uh, and the law does not provide, there were no new programs created here next year. Um, so this looks like uh, this will be done. Uh, when will this recording be available online? Um, likely in the week, it, it, this recording might not be available till not this coming week, the week after, but I believe the recording from the last session will be available this week. We have to make these recordings, uh, we, we go through and we make these accessible, we check our captioning and all the video presentation, et cetera, to make sure, again, that anything we post is fully accessible for anybody who's looking for, for the information. So that's why it takes, takes about a week for us to post the recordings, but I believe the recording from last week should be up uh, this week. Uh, this one may also be up this week, but if not this week, it should be available uh, by next week. Uh, we're using Indeed for auto retention, auto pay, how should we send it to show we're using the money for this? Again, that's not something we are collecting right now, right? We're not collecting the receipts for those portions of the funds. That is something that you do need to retain for your records uh, for audit purposes. Uh, can we black out any information not related to the bonus on the employee's paycheck? Absolutely. We just need to see that it's the center that we awarded it to, that it's the employee that we awarded it to, and it's the amount that we would expect to see. That's it. Any other information or personally identifiable information that you have on that pay stub or bonus employee paycheck, you are more than welcome to black out. We don't need to see that. Um, I think this may have been, okay. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the recording here and just say uh, one more time to thank you all so very much.